I'd like to try something here. Uh, is there a possibility we're talking to one of the Native Americans that was here in the, in the Tuckahoe Plantation? If you're one of the Native American tribes that was in this area, could you make that green light go off? If you're not, go ahead and make the red light go off. It all started with a video game. Where are you? Where are you? I'm right Where behind you. you. Oh I'm my right behind you. I'm okay, right okay. You. Oh! <laughs> During the 2020 <laughs> pandemic lockdown, I invited my buddy T to join me in Phasmophobia, a heart-elevating ghost-hunting experience from Kinetic Games. What came next was a fan favorite on my Twitch channel, Phasmophobia with the Phil Rossi Scream Team. And sure, we had fun. But as we started to see the end of the pandemic, I got a call from Phil. How would you like to do this for real? And now, here we are. Just two dads living their best life while investigating the afterlife. The Tuckahoe Plantation, located in the outlying reaches of Richmond, Virginia, consisted of 25,000 acres at its height, farming tobacco, livestock, and wheat, with three mills on the property. The Randolph family held enormous influence over the original Virginia colony and the nation, shaping the habits, customs, and politics of both. William Randolph and Maria Judith Page started their family at Tuckahoe in the 1730s, by 1745, their three children were orphaned after the untimely death of both parents. William ensured that his children would be cared for and educated at home, naming his good friend Peter Jefferson and cousin Jane Randolph Jefferson as their guardians. After William Randolph's death, Peter and Jane Jefferson moved to Tuckahoe with their children, including two-year-old Thomas, to care for the plantation and the Randolph children, and stayed until 1752, when the young Thomas Mann Randolph came of age. As with many large plantations, the Randolphs of Tuckahoe relied on enslaved African Americans and indentured servants for labor. It is unknown exactly how many were on the property, but records indicate there could have been over 200 slaves on the grounds. When the Randolphs began to sell off portions of the property to cover debts, the majority of its enslaved remained on the property or were sold off as assets. After the American Civil War, enslaved families remained in the area even after granted freedom. Some continued to work at Tuckahoe as paid servants. Before the Randolph family and before colonial settlers, the Tuckahoe property was home to a nation. The Monacan culture, the only group of Eastern Sioux in the state in this region, dates back over 10,000 years. As members of the Sioux, the Monacan spoke the Siouan language but the word Tuckahoe is derived from an Eastern Algonquin word and refers to a plant that was commonly found along the river. Early settlers believed they were entitled to this land, the native tribes just pagan savages with no title to the land they lived on. The colonial period was marked with numerous battles between the Native Americans and the colonists. During the wars, many Native Americans were captured and sold into slavery. With such a complicated history, the Tuckahoe Plantation stands as a protected National Historic Landmark. Regarded as one of the finest examples of early 18th century American plantation homes by architectural historians. The Randolph family home and many of its original outbuildings still remain on the property, having stood the test of time. 
for almost three centuries. So for our season finale, we were actually joined by, a, I guess you could say, our first special guest investigators. It was the Ghoulie Girls. The Ghoulie Girls. And I honestly think this clip, the one that I've isolated here, will absolutely sum up the entire evening we had at the Tuckahoe Plantation. Right All here. Right, let's see it. Can you get closer to the blue light that you see in the center of the room and make it go red? It would match the, the light that I my cough. <clears throat> Is there more than one person in here with us right now? You can make that green light light up if there's more than one of you in here. And the other side does turn red, and you can use that for now. I feel like I'm seeing things between the couch and the and the table there like Temperature movement where you guys maybe they're oh, closer to me Jesus. <laughs> <Three branches. laughs> i heard a scuttling and i realized it was the phone rubbing up against the Doing a ghost investigation? Those things went right here? You can count me out. <laughs> Game over, man. <laughs> See, you're learning. You're learning. You're learning. Okay, I just saw something move on this side now. Yeah. Like there's, a, there's like a misty, like yes. very faint. Yes. Just kind of like a stretched out. Like if like like if someone is smoking yeah, and no. they blow it and like right yeah. as it's just about to fade completely. I think that's a great way to sum up the entire Tuckahoe plantation experience because one minute we're 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 trying to bring the ghouly girls in very easily boo and zombie could not have, they they were fantastic they were yeah. absolutely fantastic to work with and we're, we're 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 trying to keep it light trying to keep it fun and then on a dime something weird happens yes yeah and i think that's what was uh, really interesting about this investigation and no spoilers Mm -hmm. Because we came away with a lot more evidence than we would have expected, which yeah. we'll talk about in a little bit. We will. But uh, it was a night of a lot of, I would say, personal experiences. There were a lot of well. personal experiences. There were, uh, there were some firsts that we actually caught on camera that I didn't think we, we really did capture on camera. And then going back, if there was a... Not to get ahead of ourselves with the takeaway, but if there would be one <laughs> major takeaway, I would say from this, it's never underestimate an investigation until you've gone through the evidence. Because we we did that a lot with Tuckahoe. Yes. So yes. I think we should start from the beginning. So the Ghoulie Girls reached out to me and they said, you invited us to do a paranormal investigation. And I said, yeah, sure, of course. Were you serious? And that, that was the thing. There was a, were you serious? And... Um, talked about it with you, and we were trying to find a really good location to take them to. And Haunted Nights, they were getting ready to go to the Tuckahoe Plantation. Yep. So the Tuckahoe Plantation, you heard all about it in the uh, history wrap-up at the very beginning of the show. But this is uh, in my in my old stomping grounds of Richmond, Virginia, yeah. just yeah. outside of it. And this was, I think, this was a good a good first outing for the Ghoulie Girls because of how Haunted Nights runs an event. Yeah. And yeah. How, how would you describe it? Oh, that? yeah. I mean, I think it's a, it is, you know, it's a guided investigation, mm -hmm. but it's also an experience. Right. Right. It's, there's a little bit of hype, you know, getting you excited about going into the investigation. There's people of just all different, you know, experience levels. Uh, they've got gear to share. But it's kind of a instantly more accessible when was, you're approaching I'm, it as an my experience. mind to your mind. Yes. That was exactly yes. what I was about to say. Yes, accessible. you just witnessed telepathy. Yeah, yeah, you did, you did. 
I think where, where we started, the first place that they sent us was a place called the Burnt Room. Yes, and this was in, right. This was in the main building. And the Burnt Room was this beautiful, old school, very historic. It was one of those rooms that if you took the tour of the Tuckahoe Plantation, <laughs> it was roped off. Yeah. Because... They had original pieces of furniture oh, in yeah. there. It was it was one of those places where I mean that the the placement of antiques and originals in there was more terrifying than anything otherworldly that we could have encountered. Absolutely. <laughs> and and I remember being a little taken aback when they said, So you'll come in here and they took the rope away. And I'm like, wait, we're going into this room? And and I remember standing there with with my tripods going, Where do I put stuff? And they went, anywhere but there. And I was like, why? Well, that's a like a uh, you know an original desk, yeah. and I just went, and we're gonna turn off the lights yeah. and do an investigation right. here. And we're not so graceful when the lights are on. No, 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 so. we're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we get our gear set up. We are we we, we start the process. <laughs> and just let me say, no antiques were harmed in the filming of this uh, episode. <laughs> Thank God for that. Uh, but yeah, uh, and. And right off the bat, things started happening. To help us know that you're here, that would, that would really make us happy. That was, that was Scott Sally, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what that was. It detected a change in something. Hmm. It says it's 65 over there. I just felt like a cool I got, Yeah, I just got goosebumps. Yeah. Like yeah, it was just cool just it's body right by me. It's, it says it's reading this room at 75. It's reading right, man. I'm burning up. Yeah, I know. I definitely I felt like it came from your direction, too. Man. Yeah. If that's you moving around the room trying to get a, a sense of us, we're very friendly people. We're here to learn about you. We talk a lot about the quote unquote vibe or the feeling of a space. And you have spaces that feel flat or spaces that start off feeling flat and then you kind of start to feel a you know, growth in that energy. But I think for the burnt room, like we felt something kind of as we were setting up, it just felt odd. Once, once the lights were out and we had the grid up, we had everything running, I, I honestly felt like the burnt room, I could have spent most, that yeah. I could spend more time in the burnt well, room. I'll say this, even, even with the people with all the talking that was going on just out right. in the hallway, that's what struck me about that space was that I still felt it. Even with the house full of people that were just having conversations, I still felt the energy of that space. And we were, it, this is where I was getting excited was that uh, it wasn't just with us, it was also uh, with our special guests like yes. here. T, just stand exactly still, though, because the Randolph desk is right. Yeah, the branch of yeah, the I, know. Yeah. I know. the Randolph and desk. And you know what? They grab. <laughs> they grabby. That's an original piece, the Randolph desk. That is, that, yes. Oh. It oh. is an original yes, piece. Yes, it is an original piece. Hi, how are you? Is that your, is this your desk? Did you spend time at this desk? I just got the chills. Hmm. Okay, the thing is, that also. something to touch your backpack. Really? Okay. I mean, that's pretty exciting right there. I mean, it's Boo and Zombie's first investigation, and and both girls. I will be the first one to say both Boo and Zombie. They they are not ones that struck me as. They're very matter of fact. Right. They they're going to tell you exactly what is going on in the moment in in their heads. And for, for them to say, oh yeah, zombie felt something touch her backpack. That I, I took that I took that as gospel. I was like, oh yeah, let's 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 look into this a little more. <laughs> and the fact that they didn't tap out right there and right then. There and then. <laughs> Oh no no no! Credit they came that, all the way up from South Carolina. Yeah. They were going. They were going to weather that storm. <laughs> they were going to weather that storm. We got we got more to talk about with Boo and Zombie throughout the night. But but did they earn their stripes? Absolutely, absolutely, they earned their stripes. And as I mentioned with Simon, um, Simon, which is again the flux two, it's been going off uh, on and off all night now. In my original screening of the of the clips, I had every reaction out, and I was like, "These are one reaction too many." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, after a while, it gets it gets a little it gets a little repetitive. It does. So not so, in the moment, though. I won't say in the oh moment, no, in the it moment never does. We're, no, no, in, in, in the moment. But we, for you, our viewers out there, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we got get you. you. We got you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you took that to that camera. I, I took did, that to this I camera. Did. That's okay. Split screen. There we go. <laughs> Let's go. All right. But here, here are here are what I would say the best of Simon in the burnt room. Let's take a look at this one right here. That's my question. Are these ladies? You've got to be careful with ladies. Yeah. And the Randolph family were very well. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Hi. How are you? Maybe you're not from the Randolph family. It was a different tone. Because it was now almost half a degree cooler where you're sitting. It's slowly getting colder. Mm. Yeah. Is there somebody here that is not from the Randolph family? Green for yes, red for no. It's interesting that every time we've mentioned the Randolphs, something... Something's happened. Something's happened. Yeah, every time the Randolph family was mentioned by name, it would go off. And what was interesting about that one in particular was, is that when you heard the low, the low quick tone, yeah. the low quick tone was the red, and that was also motion, not temperature. Yeah. Which was why, and that was the, the, the compelling part about this particular clip was, Fast Eddie goes off at the same time Simon goes off. Yes. And, yes. and it's, yes. it's there, that, this is why when we talk about why do you have so much gear in one spot? This is why. Because one, one piece of gear will back up or corroborate yeah. something else going on. Yeah. And, um, and while, while this particular clip I think is incredibly compelling, it's the next one that, that, that really got you and me it, it made everybody's breath kind of catch in their, Ooh, catch okay. in their throats. So let's, let's take a look at that one. It feels like you're trying to do something. We have all these devices that have energy, and if you need some energy to do whatever you want to do, feel free to, to take it from one of these devices that we have in here. One of these lighting up objects. I'd like to try something here. Uh, is there a possibility we're talking to one of the Native Americans that was here in the in the Tuckahoe plantation? If you're one of the Native American tribes that was in this area, could you make that green light go off? If you're not, go ahead and make the red light go off. And that's the green light. Oh. Could have heard Thank a pin drop in that moment. So you're one of the... This is your land, in other words. Maybe not happy with the Randolphs. Where do we begin? Oh my, I just smelled like tobacco smoke, almost like pipe smoke. <laughs> I'm not smelling that. I'm still, I'm still in and out. I've got that static charge. Green again. And green again. Is that your pipe smoke that I smell? And that's making every hair in my body stand on end right now? So yeah. this is what we talk about with the, with the personal experiences now. So you were saying that in this moment, it was that strong. It was, it was like someone puffed me right in the face wow. with a mouthful of uh, pipe smoke. Wow. And really simultaneously, I just had that static -y feeling all over my arms. My hair was straight up. It was, it almost, I mean, I was almost speechless. You see, now, the one thing I was saying that was a little frustrating was that after this personal experience and after what we caught here, because Simon was, again, I mean, this, this is one of those rare clips where mm -hmm. Simon was just, was just firing off. But then we started reading off the different um, tribes that were in the area of the Tuckahoe Plantation, even before the Randolphs mm -hmm. moved in, mm -hmm. and we didn't get any responses. Yeah. It, was, it was a little frustrating there because I was like, oh, we, we're so close. But I think this is part of the process of investigation. And we'd already been doing it at this point. Yeah. It, was, it was when something happens, you don't just say, ooh, that happened. Right. You investigate, you right. ask questions, you have follow-up questions. Right. You, you, if, you, if you open a door, you, you got to be able to walk through it. Right. And I think that, mm -hmm. was, that was something else that, that in going through a lot of this evidence, I was seeing a lot of that. I was seeing us do this more methodically. Yes. And I mean, 
All right, I'll ask you point blank. Do you think we've always done that or is this something I think that we've gotten more comfortable with or better after, at this point we were closing in on a year, but it hadn't been quite a year. You know, I, I would say we have gotten more consistent. Consistent, yeah. Because we would have moments of the follow through and then moments of losing focus, Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, I think those moments of following through are becoming more consistent. And right. again, I think that just comes with just doing this the next zone, we were going from indoor to outdoor. We were going to the, uh, there's this large area. Uh, it's the cemetery and Widow's Walk. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was, I'll be perfectly honest, yeah. I did not expect to walk away from that portion with anything just because of the ambient noise, right. the trains. Yeah. Uh, it was, <laughs> we were kind of rolling tape for a shorter span of time mm -hmm. once we got out there. I've been really anxious to show you these clips because this first one is from your POV camera. Okay, and you know, um, and I'm gonna just come out and say it. I was in whinge mode. I was whinging pretty hard, and we hear you. you, you, you. I'll just play it. Okay. Ooh, these are these are thorns, by the way. I just walked into them. And if we're sticking together, could we stick together as in like you know sticking together? Yeah. <laughs> I already got the hook once. Right Team is having none of it. The, uh, <laughs> by the thorn tree, but brother, I don't have to We found the spot where they got married. I think I was on edge because I got out there hoping I could stream it. I'd been hyping this up. The Ghoulie Girls have been hyping it up. And we get out there and the Wi-Fi was terrible. So I was already on edge. But I do love the fact that your wife is out there basically saying, yes, T, we're sticking together. Like, you know, she's ready to shiv me. I want to point out here, yeah, too. Go ahead. And go I, ahead. Brought, I brought this up with a Crescent EVP that was caught on that POV camera. Right. It's not the most sensitive mic in the world. So for it to pick stuff up it has to be pretty close. And for something like a breath, <laughs> it would have had to have been passing right by me or... or right up in your business. <laughs> yes. But here's the best part about this clip. That's us walking away from the cemetery. Well, the next clip is what we left behind in the cemetery. We left behind Simon. Mm -hmm. We also left behind a recorder. These are, these are thorns, by the way. Yeah. Like, 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 there's Simon. Together, so watch Simon. Like, you know, sticking together. I'll yep. just because, I mean, I already got cooked yeah. once by the, by the, um, I love that. Yeah. I love that so much. Yeah. Because one of the theories one of the theories that people have is that whenever anything weird happens, an EVP, uh, a, um, uh, a disembodied voice, et cetera, et cetera, and it happened at Linville. Mm -hmm. If you remember in our, in our mm -hmm. clip from the Linville stream, Simon would go off right after or at the point where something else happened. Yeah. And it happened there yeah. in Tuckahoe. Yeah. And I freaking love this clip. <laughs> well, and it makes sense, too. It's, I mean, that's where the sound was likely you know, picked up when I was on that side. You know, That's where it was coming from. So it, uh, it adds up. And it pops up, and it popped up on there. Yeah. Now, speaking of EVPs, we got to give a huge shout out to our wives, to, to Pip and Tina, who braved Widow's Walk without us. Yes. They braved Widow's Walk without us. And I got to say, they brought back two wonderful EVPs. Here's, here's the first one they brought back. Here's the first one they brought back. Stop giving your wife uh, googly eyes. I'm trying eyes. to get her attention, but she's looking at your wife. <laughs> <not me. laughs> well, yeah, they're, they're, they're doing like silent high fives yeah. to each other. All right. I'm not sure you're not happy if your memorial garden is host to wedding parties. That is true. Like, you like the signs we saw where it said cocktails? And... Yeah. Really, really cold there. So I, I listened really hard to that whisper and I couldn't figure out what it was saying. It was something percussive and, and something obviously breathy at the end. Uh, I think Pip said she heard go, go. And uh, when I first listened to it, uh, I thought it was no, no, mm. but I honestly could not hear it. So I, I'm just gonna put it down as a, as a whisper. And that is not to dismiss what, what they picked up because it was still this beautiful audible whisper. Not, however, as good as this next one. Okay, I'm ready. 
Oh, it feels really cold over here. It does. Are any of the Randolph women here? Yeah. <laughs> and then this. I love this exchange. Do you want to walk down there? <laughs> you see, this is the woman I love. I always know when she's nervous because her voice goes way up into the hyper octaves. <laughs> but that, that was chilling when I heard it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, with, and with all the activity that was going on, with all the act and, and well, especially the activity surrounding the kind of the Randolph name, and we kept saying, "Are the Randolphs here? Are yeah. you the Randolphs?" Da 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 da. And then I, I told you it was us. Yeah, I know, right? Ooh. I know. From this area, from this area, we move over. Uh, they moved us over to the smokehouse, and again, the smokehouse was a really unexpected gold mine for some of the activity considering the space we were working yes. in. I'll let you paint the scene on this one. How would you best describe the smokehouse? I mean, it was a walk-in closet yeah. when, when you get down to it. <laughs> yeah. With not a lot of room to spare. No. I mean, Which is, I don't know how they got larger groups in there. And you're going to see, we were, uh, when, when it, first we were all in there, um, you'll, you'll, you'll see how tight it is. A lot of respect. Respect for your space, respect for you, respect for your story. You would love the opportunity to connect. We know that's not you, but here we are. Hopefully you're here with us. And if you can give us some kind of indication that you're here. We'll Without okay. hesitation. Oh, Without hesitation. Right off. Fantastic. Would you mind going on the other side and making the red light go off as well? If you do that, we can actually have a conversation. The way we were propping up cameras and devices, we barely, we could not take two steps and trip over something. No. Um, Which I'm surprised we didn't trip over anything. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but, um, but shortly after this, uh, I felt there was a weird feeling that I got where I felt like I, me personally, I was not welcome. And that leads us into the to the next the next section of our of our time in the smokehouse. You have a voice, believe it or not. At least with us, mm -hmm. you have a voice. And what you want matters to us. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try something. Because um, this place this place was active, and then I came over here, and now we're we're Tina's thing is active. So I'm gonna go on ahead. I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go on ahead. I'm, I'm going to step out. Okay. And just, oh, yeah. just yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm just me. Do you want us to hold that? No, no. That I got oh, yeah. See the red light? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that's, that's me. Oh gosh, thank God. I was like, jeez. <laughs> Sorry, I should warn everybody. Okay. Um, well, then let's. I'm gonna split over and go that okay. way. Okay. Could kind of give it a. That, uh, I have a really, I don't know what I'm basing this on, Phil, yes. <laughs> but I feel like if I turn around there'd be a young, Jesus. a young African-American man. Oh, really? I feel like, yeah, like there's one like standing like right up against the wall. <gasps> oh. Hey, are you here with us right now? Are you feeling more at ease? Now that tea's gone. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna move, move this away from the door if you wanna get out. Just step in something. We, we step are not. Back. Yeah. Uh, we are not crowding you, hopefully. So, first off, I gotta say this Boo, zombie, I apologize for slamming the door so hard. Yeah, it Commit. really seemed like you wanted to lock us in there. No, I, I just felt I was waiting to smell like the smoke. There was, there was all the, there, there, the there, there were people us. outside. They, there was a lot of noise creeping in. I'm like, I gotta make this as airtight as possible. And it just, it wouldn't shut. So on the third one, I was like, 
I was loud. Yeah. It's, <laughs> there, there was something squeezed airtight in there and it went to the door, okay? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, yeah, sorry about that. But the door was shut. The door, the was, door shut. was shut. The door, the was, door shut. was shut. And, um, but I, I, I find, even with that moment, that weird moment of for freak's safety, and then we turn around and you get, an, you get a reaction from Simon as soon as I'm out the door. As soon as I'm out the door. But I did. I felt... I would say this this in the storage area were the places that I had the most personal experiences mm -hmm. because I didn't feel welcome in the smokehouse. Yeah. And the storage house, I just felt like somebody was really angry and I started getting angry. I remember feeling very uneasy. But um, but I do find it interesting that I said, you know what, I'm gonna leave and then Simon hits, hit, hits. Simon hits. Especially with with, in reaction to what was asked. Right, yeah. In, especially 100%. in reaction to what was asked. Yeah, and what was really interesting too about those spaces is I really felt everyone had some kind of emotional reaction in those spaces. We're actually gonna get to that, I believe, in the next clip. So let's just jump into that straight away. That's not working. Okay. okay. I feel very cold now. When yeah. I was over there, I just started getting cold. I don't know how to turn off the laser. No, see, I'm getting like, I'm gonna kind of stand over here. I don't want to turn it around and look. <laughs> I don't feel like. 64 right here, 63, 7. 60. I don't feel like they're malevolent or stuff. I just feel like they're scared or nervous. I just lost their stream, so. Are you scared? Oh. Um, you don't have to be. We, you don't have to be scared. I know it's hard to believe, but slavery is no longer a thing. Really proud of Zombie in that moment. I think I, when, when, when she got that response, I'm like, oh. And I, remember, I didn't realize that it happened to her. I'm outside uh, when all this right. is going on. So that was, a little, that was a nice little surprise for me. A little nugget. Yeah. A little yeah, nugget yeah, for yeah. me. Yeah, very cool. But you can see, I mean, I was also watching this footage again, watching Pip's reaction to things. And... I was starting to get uneasy watching Pip's reaction to this sort of stuff, and it it, it only it just kept it, it kept building throughout the night. And you might not believe that either, but if you need, if you're ready to leave, if you want to move past this place, no one is is keeping you here. Just like smoke for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no one is keeping you here. I'm just holding my hand out. Do you feel someone touching your hand? I like my ring finger. It just feels like a bruise on the bottom of it. I want to cry. <laughs> well, we're going to leave now. We hear some other people coming. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. We're coming. All right, you want to turn the mic? Yeah. You guys are ready to switch? Yep. yep. Okay. Oh, that was right cool. in my eyes. Yeah, I lost my hand. Anything interesting happen while it was on? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Because the most interesting thing that happened to me when I went outside, I smelled smoke. Food. I smelled yeah. smoke. Yeah, oh my god, that's what we just... We really? We literally just said we smell smoke in here. That that's, is right. As, that's right, that's that right. That is yeah. as close to catching a shared experience, I think, on video you're ever going to get. That was, that was good. The fact yeah. that I was outside and I was smelling, because I was walking around, and I honestly lost the original, the original audio, but it was just me, and I was walking around, and I remember saying, I'm smelling smoke. So what did you guys use? Did you guys use hickory? Did you guys yeah. use this? Yeah. You know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm talking about that smoke smell, and then it was gone. I'm like, oh, so this is what it's like to be Phil. Okay, okay. <laughs> and then watching that clip, watching that clip, I'm like, oh, wow, that's a shared experience. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the shared experience real quick. When you talk about the shared experience, which we had a lot of, what, how do you define it? Shared experience is you both hear an audible voice. Mm -hmm. You both see a shadow figure. And when I say both, it's the royal both. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I, I get you, I get you. But it's that where you don't necessarily are capturing something on film or on one of your recording devices, but it's just that moment where whatever phenomenon is taking place, everyone's experiencing it. And that's, it's, it was probably one of the biggest frustrations from Takaho was that there was an experience that all of us had. It was you, me, Boo, uh, Zombie. It was the entire crew. We were all in, uh, behind the stable. Yeah. And 
we had this experience and I've caught it on audio, but I'm just describing it. And it's that video that people want. It's video that they want to see. It's video that, that pretty much brings it home because there was a shadow figure that we did see and it, it had the same motions. It was standing up, it was going down, it was standing up, it was going down. But none of our cameras caught it. Well, I believe it was more than one too. I think we saw there were a couple out there. Okay. I, guess, I think I only saw Tina's, one. I think Tina saw two. The, it was just it was out of range, and there yeah. was no way we could get close to it because it was in an area that was marked off limits. Yeah. So, again, um, shared experiences are, are 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 really odd, but they're also really fantastic. Oh, they're too. No, they're they're they're, yeah. they're gems. It's just unfortunately you can't. I mean, everyone has, everyone has a different, you know, shared experiences, personal experiences, whatever you want to call it. But it is frustrating when you when you have that, and you're like, maybe I caught it on on video, and then you go through it, and it yeah. just, it's just not. Well, because that would be the cherry on top. Wouldn't that? Know, that wouldn't would that be, be the cherry wouldn't on that top? Be? Now, I also want to talk a little bit about leaving gear on by accident, because that happened to me. I had left my H2 back uh, in the stable, which was also command central for uh, Haunted Nights. I, or, and, and I left it running for at least two hours. Really? By itself. <laughs> just running, and it was just capturing all the nightlife that was going on. And as I'm listening to it, I said, well, you know what? I've caught this audio. I might as well listen to it. Okay. And here we go. Here we go. So again, this is what I caught for two hours. But I listen to it anyway, and you hear me actually come in to get something else. And then I must have listened to this over and over again. And here's the thing. Out of the two hours that I recorded of the wildlife, of the forest life, that's the only place that that pops up. It's not a fox. Right. It's not an animal in, in the forest. It is not, it's it just, that is the only place it happens. And that's what I was gonna say, out of reviewing all of my audio from the outdoors, mm -hmm. heard nothing like that. Right. For the whole night. So, like, and, happy, happy little accidents. If you leave your gear running, that's not a, oh, crap, I just filled up this card. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's data. It has to be listened to. It. Yeah, it's still got to be listened to. Exactly. But also, because you hear us conversing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And I think, had we heard that sound, we would have reacted in some way. Exactly. I was standing right next to it recording yeah. when that happened. And... It was loud enough. I really didn't have to boost that too much either. It just, it just came mm -hmm. out of the darkness. Right, but also if you notice too, the, I mean, the quality is a little different than the quality of our voice. Exactly. Right. So exactly. It's, yeah, that was a good catch. It completely accidental, but you know what? Yep. I will take credit for that. Take it, take it all the way. <laughs> take it all the way to the bank. So from storage and the smokehouse, we then go to the riverside. Yeah. And. If I remember correctly, it was this nice overlook of the James River. Yeah, it's beautiful. But it's, it, but it's a straight, it's a straight shot down too. If you go a little too far. Yeah. One of the things I remember about the Riverside though that was really nice was that they had these stumps that right. one you wanted to make sure you didn't go past because then you would start tumbling down Plumbing the hill. To your death. Yeah. Right. But the other nice thing was it was a it was literally a parade of paranormal gear. Oh, this perfect <laughs> little natural tables yeah. upon which to set our gear. Perfect. It was, if only every place was that considerate. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you sent me this clip and uh, you told me what to listen for. And again, I think you underestimated yourself. And this is us getting set up. <laughs> yeah, uh, again, yeah. you with the twofer. You know, you always miss that second, that second one. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. So, surprise, brother. You, you know what, I think I might have heard that on another device. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, you were picking up a lot more moans than I was. 
And it was funny because you sent me a clip that said, hey, there's a moan on this one. I listened, I listened, I listened. I was like, there's no moan on this one. And then I, I heard the moan on this one and said, could he admit this one? Maybe. <laughs> You get a little like ev evidence, like haze. Yeah, yeah, you do. You, you kind of get like a fog, like yeah. you know. They call it, uh, they, they, you know, in in Destiny, it's called raid brain. Yeah, where you're just like, we gotta do this one more time, yeah. and you're just like, I think it's time we tapped yeah. out. Um, but yeah, that was that was one of the groans that you picked up, and that growl. Uh. Yeah, and as with many of the spots on that property, again, there was just an atmosphere, a vibe. Mm -hmm by the river. Yeah. And it was, what was interesting too was it was different in different spots. You know, yeah. by the stumps it was different, then further over toward the house it was different, and then on the other side of the stumps where by the where trees the, were. Yeah, where the trees it was were. different over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And it's, um, speaking of different, we were trying different things. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the debut of me trying to use a trigger object with my ghost puppet, George. Mm -hmm. And we got mixed results. We got results. We just didn't get the results that we were expecting. <laughs> right. Um, but I, I was pretty proud of this one. You were telling me, T, you gotta listen to this clip because there's a, uh, there's a creepy whisper in, uh, in the audio. And you're absolutely right. I wanna make sure I play this for you, just to make sure. Children, let's on farm. So, the, so basically the idea was, is that I was giving out candy with George at Halloween, yeah, I, I should add. This works so at Halloween. Kids that are living. <laughs> we could try it with the, the non living kids. So let's see what Daddy happens. See, what I love about that is some of us heard it. You're right. A lot of us did hear the whisper. Here's why Children, let's on fall. So, the, so basically, the idea was is that I was giving out candy with George. And I thought, if this works so well with kids that are living, you can try it with the, the non-living kids. Yeah, yeah. You picked up a creepy whisper. It was my, it was my creepy wife, oh. creepy Pip. That was that was the creepy whisper. That was the creepy whisper. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the what's the moral of this lesson, kids? <laughs> Don't whisper. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't even whispering. She was. Um, she was clearing her throat, and uh, oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that whisper? Did you hear that whisper? I just heard it again. Yeah, because it's around the corner. You have the multiple devices to make sure that you're covered. Yeah. And I remember thinking, hey, wait, I have this audio. I listened yeah. to it. I said, oh, I can't wait to share that with Bill. Yeah. So <laughs> good try, good try, and it was good to listen because yeah, you heard it. Yeah. It was. Just, it was. My I wife. heard it. People reacted to it. <laughs> And it was a shared experience. It was a shared experience. <laughs> You're gonna get more value by the more ears you have on your evidence. Oh, absolutely. And the more sources. Absolutely. If that's what you're going out there for. If you're going out there to capture evidence. Right. And you want to have, I won't say credible, but you want to have you want to have legit you want to have evidence, <laughs> you know, credible, legit, what, whatever yeah. your words you want to use, credible, legit, reliable. Reliable. And that's that's probably the, the thing we definitely want to get across. Undebunkable. <laughs> Undebunkable. There's, that's that's the cherry right there. But but I think reliable is probably the best. Yeah. I mean, you want to make sure your gear is working. We, we talked about mm -hmm. it. What what do you do when your gear fails mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. You know, what's what's your plan mm -hmm. B? And you also want to make sure that that it's not uh, like a snippet of something you're catching. Mm -hmm. Or a fellow investigator. Or a fellow investigator. And, and that is, if you pick it up on yours, and then I can go to my audio mm -hmm. and go, oh, hey, it is there. And that was what happened with the whisper. Yeah. That was what happened with the whisper in the, um, uh, in the cemetery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then to have that corroborated with, with Simon, yeah. That was bonus. Yeah. But here, you know, this is also how you debunk. I mean, it's even so the creators. Important. It's even, so important. It's even so important. the creators of the Ghost Tube app, which mm -hmm. we just reviewed on the Five Minute Paranormal, they said the same thing. Try to debunk your evidence because that makes mm -hmm. it even more credible. That wasn't the last piece of audio that we that we brought back from, from, no. from the Riverside. No. Because while we did have a lot of stuff that we debunked, Rather, the stuff that I debunked for 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 your entertainment, you know, with creepy pip. My public shaming. Yeah, right. and your public okay. shaming because I, I I do get a joy out of it because you you haunt me at night with the stuff you send me to, to review. I'm That's like, true. well, this is my revenge. That's fine. That's fine. I appreciate it. Thinking, you know, some of the little child's like fish that jumped. 
No, that's why I was like, his light on the tripod. So I don't know if the wind could have blown it no. off and set it up again. He put it there and then just went. No, but you know what? I had, it was. You don't want to sing Ring a Ring a yeah. Rosie, George? That's why I was like, Jesus Christ. Oh, Do you know the story of Ring Around the Rosie? I didn't even you don't know the need light to sing was there. The story so about it. You can just that's sing a creepy, it. That's a creepy there. song. That's a creepy story. Oh. That's a creepy song. Creepy song. Very popular. Creepy song. And here's the thing about that grunt. Yeah. It is similar to the grunt that we had just earlier played. Yeah. And that's the part that keeps me up at night. It's not It's not just a random sound and it's drive by and it's gone. That's the same, whatever it is, it's the same thing. Right, and that's always, like you said, that that's, spooks me the most when I review evidence and I get some of those consistent yeah. sounds at different points. It's a reliability you don't want. It's, <laughs> or, you, or you do, but you just want to keep your lights on when you're going to Exactly, yeah, exactly. It's okay. I think the scariest part of this whole thing, when people ask me, when they, when they find out that, that I'm doing paranormal investigation, they go, well, what's the thing that scares you the most? And I said, what scares me the most is data review. <laughs> because we hear this stuff and we go, we didn't hear that in the moment. It's such a strange feeling. It's not... It spooks you. I think spooks is a great, yeah. a great word. Sure. But it just does so much. There's so much processing <laughs> that's happening <laughs> because you know you didn't hear it at the time. Right. It comes through multiple times. And you're trying to make sense of something that is almost impossible to make sense of. So our host told us of one more place we could go to, and it was yep. the outdoor kitchen. Yes. Let's just be blunt. Mm -hmm. They were done with us by that point. They being whatever entities were on the property. <laughs> yes, that the non-living, the non-living, non -living. they were done. They right because there had been a wedding earlier yep. in the day. Yep, and then sixty some odd. I would say it was more like forty some odd people. Forty somewhere between forty and sixty some like odd 40, people. Yeah, tromping through. Yeah, yeah. Um, all kinds of shenanigans going on. And we just felt that when we got everything set up and we got it started, you just felt this, oh, for Pete's sake. You know? yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so to close up this, uh, this investigation, I have this clip, which I am particularly proud of. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank for you. For sharing your space. And thank you for putting up with all of us tonight. It's, this is there's thank you. yeah, and thank you for giving our friends from South Carolina a really fantastic night. Please pass it along to everyone here. And uh, you have to stay here, though. This yes. is your space. You all have to stay here. You all have to stay here. Yes. You thank you. Stay here. <laughs> we appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful night. Enjoy the peace. And um, again, thank you. Okay, lights on. Lights on. No, I mean, that, it was like you have to stay here. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. That's fine. As if, long as you go. As long <laughs> as you leave. As long as you leave, we're staying yeah. right here. <laughs> yeah. What a finish, though. That yeah. Was, I mean, it was a perfect closing comment from our unseen friends. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. First off, I want to give a big shout out. Got a big shout out to give to Zombie and Boo, the Ghoulie Girls. If you're not watching them on Twitch, you should, because they are a delight to watch. And wow, did they come to play. They, they came they, to play. They were, they were terrific. Yeah. They were terrific. It was such fun introducing them to this. And this is, this is after they played stuff like Dead by Daylight, they'd done Phasmo, they'd done yeah. all those games that yeah. we did. And they were legitimately excited about wanting to try this and then when i made the offer i think i think it, we, we knocked a homer having them come up and yeah. now we're returning the favor sometime within the year we're heading down yeah. to south carolina and apparently they've got some ideas for us well that's great I yeah love, I, love, I, love hearing that. I do love hearing that but i, I thought that the yeah. ghoulie girls did a great job and i thought this was a great event it was a, it was to a, introduce them to yeah yeah so Haunted Nights put together an ideal event to introduce, as we mentioned at the top of the show. Yeah. And, and again, an investigation. And again, I'd like to say a special thank you to Haunted Nights for making this type of stuff possible. Solid event for 
beginners. Right. And then also, if you just want to have that social aspect and meet like-minded souls and network bond a at a bit. great Absolutely. place and network, nah. I mean, these events are great for that. Yeah, and, and I feel like uh, we had a great time. Additionally, we did a another Haunted Nights event where uh, that's going to be our Christmas special, mm -hmm. and and we're yeah. excited to share that with with everybody everybody here as well. And as far as Tuckahoe goes, what an interesting place! Very interesting. Place. What an interesting place! It's just, I mean, again, I underestimated it. I thought, well, we gave the Ghoulie Girls a great time, and we're moving on, but this place just really surprised me in the Re in the yeah in the yeah. review in the review but even going back and listening uh through the audio watching the footage yeah i had forgotten some of the personal experiences that we had exactly so when exactly. taken you know in, as a whole it was a really really fascinating night a really good experience Again, we want to thank the Ghoulie Girls for joining us. Boo, Zombie, you did a fantastic job on your first investigation, and we can't wait to find a spot in South Carolina to investigate with you. We also want to thank the folks over at Haunted Nights for a fantastic event, and we wish you nothing but success and good luck in the future events you have to come. And we'd love to hear from you, so make sure to like and subscribe and enable notifications for whenever we put up new content, because we do have new content coming even after this season finale. And make sure to drop us a comment or drop us a request for a five minute paranormal. We would love to hear from you. And make sure to follow us on Instagram. Make sure to follow us on TikTok. And we now have YouTube Shorts. So keep an eye on YouTube Shorts as well because we have some new content coming there as well. One other thing we wanted to talk about is this is our season finale. So. What do we got planned for coming up ahead? Coming up ahead, so after this, you're gonna expect a five minute paranormal every other week. Every other week. We're also going to have our Halloween special, which is going to be an extended TWA episode. We have a lot of footage that we cut. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The original cut was 90 minutes and I cut it back to less than an hour. So yeah. we're gonna be putting in that yeah. and giving that to you all on Halloween night. So keep an eye out for that. We are also going to have a Christmas special. We do have that. It's going to be an investigation of the Dunlora bed and breakfast, and you will see that here around Christmas time. We will be back with brand new investigations and brand new episodes in February of 2023. And we will also be streaming on my Twitch channel, Live Paranormal Investigations. We have a few lined up. We're already looking at 2023, and we cannot wait to share with you what we have coming so make sure to give me a follow or a sub over at twitch.tv and i'd love to see you there and for all of our tiktok followers we will also be streaming many of these investigations live on tiktok so look for that live notification from old spirits investigations at our tiktok account and of course make sure to listen to don't turn around the paranormal podcast that kind of got us all started on this whole wild journey unbelievable Unbelievable. A year. Yeah. A year. Yeah. Who the yeah. fuck A it? year. <laughs> yeah. And that is what we have planned. So thank you all for joining us for this first season of Old Spirits. Take care. Stay safe. And we'll see you in the field.